What's up everybody, welcome to the Macintosh Review. In this video I wanted to give you guys a full review of iOS 11. This will be released to the general public later this year in September, and Apple did make it available to developers in beta form at the WWDC earlier this month, so let's jump into some of the best features and my impressions of the operating system. So Apple made iOS 11 available to developers at the WWDC this year, and there are a lot of new features to talk about that will change the way you use your iPhone and your iPad. So let's start with the iPhone. So right off the bat, there is a new lock screen design with new animations. It is very, very fluid. Not that iOS 10 was bad, but it actually is faster than iOS 10, which is nice to see. They've also added some new application animations when you are actually opening and closing applications. So there's not much of a speed difference, but it definitely is noticeable when you are first using iOS 11. Usually it's just interesting each year to see the new animations they throw in, so iOS 11 also has some new animations there. Now one of my favorite features of iOS 11, both on the iPhone and the iPad, is the Control Center. Control Center has been completely redesigned to fit on one page as opposed to the two pages in iOS 10, which was much needed in my opinion. And it also works further with 3D Touch capability to reveal more functions. So this is customizable within settings. Much of this was taken from the jailbreak community and it definitely is a positive change. And using 3D Touch, you can just use so much more functionality in the control center on your device. It's a little cluttered at first, but I think it's a positive change in general going forward. Going back to the lock screen, it has been merged with the notification center. So when you swipe down on your home screen, it will bring you to the lock screen. Not a big change, but there isn't a separate notification center anymore like there was in iOS 10. Another feature that actually was moved over from the jailbreak community is a new one-handed option for typing available on the iPhone and the iPad. It's very much needed and it allows for quicker actions when responding to messages or typing into the Notes app or any info with a single hand. Siri received a bunch of updates in iOS 11. It has been updated to allow different voices and you can also now allow translations for different languages which is similar to how Google Assistant works. Just makes it easy if you are in a foreign country and you need to know how to say something. That'll work a lot better than Siri used to work which didn't allow translations. A new feature that I think I will use all the time is Apple Pay. It has now been integrated into messages directly which allows you to send and receive money with your friends over iMessage. So this is similar to PayPal or to Venmo. It will work in a very, very similar manner and will allow you to pay for items or cash out to a bank account through your Apple Pay account. Very, very interesting. I'm sure it will not kill Venmo as Venmo is very popular right now, but it's nice to see Apple integrating that directly into the operating system. A feature I've waited forever to be included in iOS is a screen recorder and iOS 11 has brought that directly natively integrated to the operating system. So it works very similar to the way that previous screen recorders have worked on jailbroken devices. You can go directly into this control center and actually go ahead and click a button. It will start recording your screen. And then when you go ahead and click the button again, it will be saved directly into your camera roll. Now, I absolutely love this. I will use this a lot on my iPhone, and this is a very much needed feature that I will use almost every day. So very, very happy to see this. I'm sure a lot of you guys will be excited about this as well. Now, applications like Snapchat, I'm sure Apple and the developers will work together to work on a method to prevent people from just taking video of your Snapchats when using that. But right now, I'm very, very excited to see that included in iOS 11. The App Store has been completely redesigned, and honestly, I didn't mind the old App Store in iOS 10, but this App Store is going to take some getting used to. Now, all of the apps have been redesigned to emulate the new look, and it's just an aesthetic change from Apple with the same functionality not too new there, and I'm just going to have to get used to it. Not really going to make a difference in my everyday experience. The camera app has been updated with QR code scanning, something we did not have in the past, and the Notes app actually allows for document scanning directly into the Notes application, so both nice to have natively in iOS that did require separate applications in the past iOS 11 is introducing a dark mode that is not a full dark mode as we have wanted in the past with iOS 10, but it does allow for a very, very close, great replacement, and I'm definitely in love with it. I cannot complain about that. As you guys can see from these photos, it's going to look awesome. Can't wait to use that when it is finally full-blown released in September. Now, the Photos app also will allow for live photo editing, and GIFs will now be available natively in the Photos app. Both welcome changes to iOS. 
Now for the iPhone and the iPad, Apple actually did release a files application. Now this is not what you guys think it is. It's not a native files application. You cannot view the native files on your iPhone, but it does allow you to view all of your files in one place. It does have third-party application integration, so applications like Dropbox can be built right into this, and you can view all your files on your iPhone and on websites on the cloud all in one place. Now the iPad had some very, very new features, iPad specific released. There is a new dock on the iPad. It's available anywhere by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. Whether you are in an application or on the home screen, you can view it anywhere in the operating system, very similar to a Mac. And there is new multitasking along with the dock. You can click and drag from the dock. And you can also add many, many more applications to the dock as opposed to the standard amount that were allowed on iOS 10. Very, very new features, makes it very similar to a Mac. And I absolutely love it. So those are some of the major features of iOS 11, guys. In terms of public release, this will be available in September for you to download on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. By then, iOS 11 will have all of the bugs ironed out from the beta program, and I'm expecting it to be an awesome release along with the iPhone 8. Now, although some of the features aren't revolutionary, they definitely are very, very nice to have. And right now, I'm very much loving it. I haven't had too many bugs in the second beta. I did have a lot of issues with the first beta, but like I said, all of those will be ironed out for the public release this September. So if you guys liked this video, be sure to leave it a like and leave a comment in the description with your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the new iOS 11. And I will be posting more videos on this topic in the near future, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. And as always, guys, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.